Hello everyone, Buen here. I'm the director of SEO at Content Distribution. I'm also the product manager for Cluster AI. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us for yet another week of our keyword uh, research challenge. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we're gonna make this one short and sweet. We're really gonna make it a 15 minute challenge uh, this uh, time around. And uh, before I go to the actual keyword research and what we have chosen to do today, uh, I wanna talk to you about um, a couple of things. And the first thing is um, what we do not do in order to get results. So everything that I'm going to show you um, during this um, keyword research uh, is something that has been battle tested. We have been using Cluster AI for over 15 months as an in-house tool. And it has uh, done wonders for each and every one of our projects that we brought from zero to 100 um, organics per month. Uh, it has never failed. Um, what we have never done is build backlinks. What we have never done is uh, paid for ads. What we have never done is um, social media campaigns that are gonna send signals to Google. What we have never done is rely on referral traffic and so on and so on. What we did do is we created quality content um, that is giving more added value than the competitors for the same targeted keyword or keywords. And uh, we uh, have uh, been publishing, um, let's call it um, a higher velocity of publishing. These are the two um, only things that matter when it comes to implementing keywords that Cluster AI will group for you. This is how we can guarantee results. Uh, to explain a bit more what does, what does publishing velocity mean in our own terms? Well, for our first project, we published 200 pages uh, for a new website uh, that had a shitty domain rank, uh, rating uh, in terms of the co competition in the space. And this is the table that you're seeing right now. And what we did is we published 200 pages within uh, a period of six months. Now, how is this possible? Well, uh, if you know exactly what you want to target, if you know exactly what you want to write, and if you know exactly what kind of, um, that any page that you publish is going to give you results, then you can actually plan your budget, right? You can plan on whether you can, you don't have to ask yourself whether this is viable or not. And this is exactly what we did with dagipedia.org. And I want to steer your attention to column E, which is uh, efficiency or uh, rather uh, the traffic that's generated per page of content on a website. And if you look at the competitors in the space and um, not just the competitors, but the top platforms in the space, when we started this uh, year and a half ago, uh, you can see that on average, there is um, 180 uh, visitors uh, between 180 and uh, 800 visitors per page. Uh, and that is uh, something that we managed to achieve to a much lower number than um, our competitors. Why? Because we did not participate in any kind of guesswork. We knew exactly which 200 pages we want to tackle. We knew exactly uh, what keywords we want to target with those 200 pages. And we did not have any kind of um, expense on you know, publishing a page that would not rank. Uh, and this has given us results again and again. It's uh, been Dagipedia in the beginning, um, a number of projects in the middle, and then uh, it all culminated with uh, Do Not Pay, where we are uh, close to half a million organics per month with the same uh, method that I'm going to show you today. Um, so let's dive into it, okay? So the winner of this week's... Um, uh, keyword research challenge is, I forgot who, <laughs> but I know that we are researching the skiing niche. And what is important is something that we, is that you decide on what kind of a content silo or what kind of a vertical, kind of vertical you want to focus on in order to create a great keyword list. And why is this important? Because it depends on the way you create, the way you create your keyword list, that's the, that's going to affect the way you uh, get the groupings from Cluster AI, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But let's do this. Let's do the keyword list the proper way. Okay. So I'm doing the uh, I'm doing the skiing niche, but 
Um, I want to focus on something that um, can be a content series. I want to focus on something that can be a single vertical. So what I want to do is before we decide what that's going to be, before I tell you what we decided on that being this week, I'm going to go super broad. So ski and skiing. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this so it doesn't bother us. Okay. I'm going to go to having the same terms so I can see all of the keywords that are there. And yeah, this is going to be a bunch of uh, keywords, a bunch of things that might not be something that are, uh, that's interesting to us, but we're doing skiing in terms of a winter sport, right? So we're probably not going to include jet ski and other things, uh, but let's take it one step at a time. So what I want to do is for this content series, I want to do informational content. I want to focus on content that can populate my blog uh, for whatever project that I have, whatever pro property that I have that has to do with the uh, skiing market. And I'm going to do this by using the include function in Ahrefs. You can do the same in SEMrush. There's a very similar thing. I'm going to use any word because I want all of them in. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the modifiers for the, you know, questions that are frequently asked and, you know, the problems that people want to solve, which is going to be um, who, what, uh, when, how, uh, and then I'm going to do could and should and would. Um, I'm also, actually not, I'm not going to use, um, top and best because I want to exclude products from this content series. I want to have keywords that are just informational. Okay. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Apply. Let's see what shape we're in. Okay, cool. This kind of looks like something that's, uh, that can be interesting, right? This actually looks like, um, everything that I want to have in and that's great, but what I see right away is that I don't want to do water sports. That's not what I'm interested in. Water. And then I'm not going to do jet ski. And then I'm also going to exclude, uh, I'm also going to exclude near me because I don't want to deal with local searches right now. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get a list of 50 K keywords and this is fine, but uh, who's going to be grouping this? I mean, it's going to be a team of people. It's going to be competition research. It's going to be uh, weeks and weeks. We're going to have to publish something. How the hell are we going to do this in a period of time that's reasonable and that's viable for a budget? Well, we're going to have Cluster AI do it for us. And we have streamlined this uh, research to include informational content. That's great. Uh, I'm going to streamline it even more. I'm just going to... HRF has this database of keywords that have between zero and 10 of volume. You can, by all means, incorporate these keywords uh, as well when you import your list into Cluster AI, if that's something that's, if it's a really specific thing that you're interested in, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do the minimum volume of 10. And what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna go down to 2000 keywords and this is just amazing. I'm gonna export them. Um, and I am going to be importing them into Cluster AI as is. So here we go. This is the Cluster AI UI. We're working on a new one. I promise it's going to be prettier and much better to navigate, but you actually don't need any kind of a functionality, special functionality here. All I need to do is drag and drop my um, list. It's there. That's amazing. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my link to um, Ahrefs uh, URL uh, because I want to see what things that I, what are the things that I have included and what are the things that I've excluded. Cluster AI is going to send you this in a report, in an email, so you know where you left off. I'm going to choose uh, my import, input, input list uh, type, so Ahrefs. And then I'm not going to uh, choose a country. We're doing US, but we do support a huge list of countries, everything that's supported by um, uh, all of the other keyword research tools. Okay, cool. 
I'm not gonna put in any kind of uh, additional um, emails here. I'm just gonna click submit. Uh, 2000 keyword list is gonna take between half an hour and one hour, probably not even, uh, probably not even that long, but that's something that I've done already for you guys because we wanna uh, look at this uh, grouping. And here it is. So what Cluster AI does is um, it will give you one column that is going to show you the main keyword. Uh, and then the third column uh, is gonna be all of the variations that are grouped together with the main one. Uh, the column in between is the aggregated volume uh, that we uh, fetch from Ahrefs and that's all that we fetch from Ahrefs. Everything else is done by analyzing Google search engine result pages. And that is done in a way that we take every keyword that you imported, imported and then we look at the results uh, for each and every one of those keywords. We compare those results and then our AI will group them together to give you the best possible chance to rank. The variations, mind you, are uh, organized in this cell uh, in a descending order. That means that as you can see, it's gonna, the main keyword is gonna be repeated. Once again, that's the one that has the highest volume. And then the ones as we go down are in descending order, they will have less and less volume. Um, here's something that's really interesting that I wanna talk about uh, here for a moment. And then I'm gonna have you guys um, ask questions. And that's, um, I now know exactly, uh, you know, how many pages do I need to create? So every row of this table is one page that I need to create. Uh, that I'm going to uh, I'm going to use the main keyword to uh, have it as the main topic, and then I'm going to implement the variations on page. And what's interesting is that I actually don't have to create a lot of how to uh, how to skip pages. This was the most interesting thing to me. Why? Because all of these keywords are actually grouped, grouped together in one page, and this is going to be the biggest one. And this is probably the one that I'm going to want to come back and re-optimize or add more text and so on. I want to have this as an ultimate guide for sure. Um, but let me show you something else. If I just use the, oh, oops, if I just use the simple um, find function, I'm going to use how to ski. And check this out. There is a... Um, a number of keywords that Cluster AI grouped as um, grouped separately uh, because that's going to give me the best chance to rank on this. So I have no idea what is ski moguls, uh, probably uh -huh, bumps or things like this. That's at least what I'm seeing here um, in the um, the groupings. But anyways, I'm going to need to create a separate page for this kind of content. Then I'm going to um, Okay, how to ski powder, that makes sense to be a separate page. How to ski better. So this is not gonna be grouped, um, it's not gonna be grouped together with this main one. And this is what I really like. How to ski, if I create this page, is gonna be an ultimate guide that's uh, gonna be focusing on beginners. It's gonna be focusing on down, downhill ski, uh, how to learn, learning, and then for dummies, these are really interesting FAQs that you can incorporate in your content. But if I look at this one, how to ski better, you're gonna see that there's an um, interesting keyword group here. How to ski for intermediate uh, people who know these things. How to improve skiing technique. So these are going to be the uh, keywords that I'm going to implement on site. Another thing is Cluster AI does not only give you uh, clusters of keywords. It actually gives you topic clusters if you look at it that way. Let me show you what I can just do uh, with another just find function. Uh, and if I go through all of this, uh, you know, content opportunity, uh, you know, who knows? I may have, may find even more kind of a groupings that I would need to, you know, um, connect my content. What I want to do is see what are my internal linking uh, possibilities right now, even before I start uh, writing content. So let's do boot or boots. Right off the bat, there's a lot of uh, pages that I know I can actually interlink together and have a topic cluster because I'm going to need to create a separate page for how to put on ski boots, how much do they weigh, how much do they cost, um, 
what holds holds it to a ski okay this is uh, really informational and how tight should they be uh, and so on and so on mind you there is always a question so for example there's this topic of how to adjust ski uh, bindings um, there's also something about boots here and that's also going to be like how to adjust ski binding boots amazing these are the things that I can actually use up to link to other uh, pages. If I write a content, if I write content about what ski, what size ski boot am I, I can easily know already, even before I started writing, that I'm going to have an internal link, which is going to have an anchor text of uh, it's going to be um, how to adjust ski bindings for my boot size. And then I'm going to link it to this page, which is about how to adjust key bindings. That's gonna give you topic clusters right up front while you're creating the content that you're creating. Um, okay. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining. This has been a quicker one. I'm happy to answer all of your questions in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, just uh, ask question. We'll come back to you as soon as possible. If you're watching this on Facebook, we're even faster there. Um, thanks everybody for joining me and um, yeah, hope to see you soon.